Now, today I'm joined by Mark Christopher Lee from the Pocket Gods. It's an indie band from the UK who've released 70 plus records in the 20 years that they've been playing together. Now, this year they've released an album called Nobody Makes Money Anymore, which features a thousand songs, all 30 ish seconds in length. And it gained a lot of press and has hit a million streams on Spotify. So, Mark, I mean, surely you must be rolling in it. Rich, be your wildest <laughs> dreams. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Uh, I mean, <laughs> The album you alluded to, yeah, we've had over a million streams, which is fantastic. Fans all over the world. Uh, I must have earned about 300 quid from Spotify from wow. now, uh, from those million streams, which which is a crazy, crazy amount, really. Imagine if you sold that amount of vinyl or CDs. Oh, and cranky. Stuff. I mean, I've yeah, never yeah. been outside the house. Absolutely. <laughs> And a, sh- and a chauffeur, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, you guys are Guinness World Record holders. You've just released a Christmas song. All I want for Christmas is for someone to buy my million pound album. I think I've got that right. Again, yeah. that's 30 seconds in length. There is an yeah. actual album with just one special vinyl copy as well, which will cost you said million pounds. So there's an awful lot to unpack from all this. But let's rewind mm. a little bit to mm. 2015 when you first started cam- campaigning against Spotify or campaigning for fairer royalties from yeah. Spotify. It's probably a better way yeah. of saying it and um you first embarked on the 30 second route around this time as well so just explain to us the background behind this and why the 30 second length is so important yeah i mean i originally got the idea from a professor in america a music professor called mike erico uh, and he wrote an article for the independent back in 2015 saying why aren't songwriters writing just 30 second songs okay <laughs> streaming platforms like spotify pay out after 30 seconds and as the royalty is so small why write longer songs the three minute pop song should not exist that was for basically the length of seven inch vinyl uh, so why don't artists of today adapt to the media of today so that was the article and i thought wow that's brilliant i'm going to do that <laughs> so i went away and had this crazy thought i think yeah i could i could just write 30 second songs and to make it impressive i'm going to put 100 of these on an album and call it 100x30 uh, which is what i did and i wrote 100 songs all 30 seconds long all about the state of the music industry mm-hmm. uh, and i really really enjoyed it it was really really difficult and luckily i had okay. some help from other bands that helped with songs which is brilliant but i got it out there and uh it got some great response uh, i got features in billboard played on radio one radio six and uh, it just basically encouraged this debate into this issue because artists especially the ones in the, in the medium stream and lower streams in terms of where they are, uh, don't get paid very much. If you're the likes of Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift, you've got the billions coming in, so you're not going to worry yeah. too much. But the ones that are in the, in the medium kind of range, we, we can't make enough money to make a living, and that's that's quite a serious issue. And I just worry about the artists of the future. They're thinking, oh, what's, what's the point of going into music? There's no, there's no money in it. We're never going to make any money. Mm-hmm. So this campaign, like you said, has been going on since 2000, 2015. We've released now 15 of these albums of just 30 second songs. Most of them have 100 songs. Uh, one has a 300 songs <laughs> and one has 500 songs. And like you said, we did one earlier this year of a thousand songs, Brilliant. Which, which is a crazy and it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> just, and it wasn't just the songwriting and uh, recording it was just all the metadata and uploading oh, it oh yeah of course pressing yeah. send to spotify and it crashes because no one's ever done this before <laughs> so there was a real risk when i did this that i wouldn't have been able to get it out because i didn't know whether these services would be able to take albums of a thousand tracks because it's never been done before so there you go Incredible stuff. And just to counterbalance this, as well as doing all these incredible 30 second songs, you actually have, is it the Guinness World Record for the world's longest song as well? Yeah, that's that's actually a Christmas song. It's called A Quantum Christmas. And it's 115 hours long. And it's, like a, <laughs> it's like a trance rock epic. It's like Popo Vu meets uh, Hawkwind on a, on a bad day. Oh, my word. 115 <laughs> hours. I mean, that's... I mean, how on earth did you put that together? Was it a lot of loops? Was it that kind of thing? It was a lot of loops, to be fair. But the only way I could get it released on these digital platforms was to split it into three and a half hour sections. Okay. So there's like, I don't know, there's 30 odd of them, of these 30 hour sections. And have you ever listened to the whole thing all the way through? I haven't, no. No, <laughs> has anybody? <laughs> <laughs> they, should get a, they should get a prize. Yeah. <laughs> probably, <laughs> it's probably good for insomniacs. I mean... <laughs> But it's, 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 it does start off quite interesting. I mean, it's, it's called the Quantum Christmas. I kind of 
get a load of kind of obscure samples from theoretical physicists like Wolfgang Pauli and people like that and put them in there, hide them in there. So it's quite, it's quite weird. <laughs> fantastic fantastic now you mentioned as well the likes of the the biggest streaming artist ed sheeran mm. that sort of thing in the past there's been lots of famous critics of spotify prince pulled his his music from streaming services in 2015 mm. i think taylor swift did something similar in 2014 yeah. pink floyd voiced their objections coldplay newer bands like coldplay yeah. have done it too but they're all back on now i believe so 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 why are they back on and, and what what's the difference between these guys who are making fortunes and, and you guys and and smaller musicians and, and entering musicians yeah, I mean, there seems to be a lack of clarity on who gets paid what. I think that's one of the issues, uh, to be honest, because like you said, a lot of artists have pulled music off and now they're releasing music again, like mm -hmm. Adele, for instance. She's very happy now to have her music on Spotify. Why? Mm -hmm. She wasn't happy a few years ago. Something's changed. We don't know what's changed. And uh, I mean, on the back of this campaign, I've actually had a meeting with Spotify. I've actually met Daniel Ek uh, a few years ago. Very nice chap, got on well with him, had his email address. So I emailed him this album, and uh, <laughs> and uh, he really liked it. He said it's you know it's a bit like Malcolm McLaren kind of marketing. Yeah, uh, that was his angle. So he set a meeting up with his head of music, Brian Johnson, who himself used to be in a band, uh, and we had a really good meeting. And their side of the story is they get a you know big big lot of money and they distribute it they say fairly they say central percent of money they get they they give to rights holders to artists uh but i don't know i just think there's something wrong some somewhere in the equation in terms of bigger artists seem to be getting more money maybe because they've got preferential access to to the playlist which is what you need if you want to get anywhere these days yep. the holy grail nowadays is getting on an official playlist Whereas in the past, it used to be on played on BBC Radio 1, for instance, on a playlist on there. But now it's a, a Spotify playlist. So the, the, there are issues there. There's a lack of clarity. It's really difficult to find out what's going on. I don't have a contract with Spotify saying I'm going to get X amount per stream. There's a big pot of money. It's divvied out. I'll get some money at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it relates to, really. It, it, it's, it's crazy. And the UK government, to be fair, has been, has been looking into it. Yeah. Uh, so, but because these are multinational global organizations, uh, I don't know what they can do really. But, you know, also in this, I wanted to, I'm actually making a film about all this. Yes. Uh, yep. It's called it Inspired, a 30 second song movie, which explores this campaign. And also in the film, I ex want to in engage with the consumer, the listener. You know, we pay £9.99 a month for our Spotify package. Mm -hmm. That seems ridiculously cheap to have access to every song that's ever been recorded. Maybe we should be paying more. Maybe we should be valuing music and its creators more. These are the, some of the issues I wanted to raise. Oh, interesting. Yeah, very interesting indeed. I mean, t tell us a little bit more about the, the video. I mean, is that out? I saw I saw it December. Is that, is that being, is it still coming out this month? Uh, possibly in the new year now. Okay. It's a three-hour film. It explores this whole campaign, the economics of music streaming. And it's also about acting on inspired thought. When you get these crazy ideas, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some most people just think, oh, that's rubbish, that's crazy, it'll never work. But because I followed this idea, I actually now do music full-time. I'm making films, I'm making TV shows because I followed this idea. Yeah. I've also you know, got this issue into the mainstream where people are talking about it. Uh, which is great. So I think it's, yeah, you know, I want to inspire others to follow their dreams, their passions. If they get these mad ideas, sometimes follow them. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't know where they're going to take you. So, and that's testament to me. I've been doing music for, you know, 30 years now. I've been doing the Pocket God since 1998. It's our 25th anniversary next year. Um, we, um, we've had so many ups and downs, you know, for instance, John Peel, the late John Peel, he discovered us briefly and then died like a month later. Uh, and they've had the same with Tony Wilson from Factory Records. He discovered us and then he died as well. Bit of a, bit of a theme going on here. <laughs> I'm getting a bit worried now. <laughs> <laughs> but we kept going. That's the thing. And most bands would have given up a long time ago. Um, so perseverance sometimes pays off. Absolutely. Now, kind of bringing it to now then, I mean, you put out a Christmas yeah. single, as I said, all I want for Christmas is someone to buy my million pound album, yeah. um, which relates to the said album in question, Vegetal Digital. Um, there's only one copy. It's vinyl. It will empty the 
via a bank account of said million pounds. Um, many people may think this is your way of trying to get rich quick, but it's not, <laughs> is it? There is a reason why behind this. No, it's, it's not for the Bentley and the chauffeur. It's, <laughs> basically, with the proceeds of this album, we're going to uh, fund our own ethical streaming service called Nub Play. And with it, we will uh, pledge and guarantee to pay artists at least one penny per stream, which doesn't sound very much, but it's 50 times the current rate from Spotify uh, and may go some some way to, you know, create a better world. And obviously it'll still be a small company because a million pounds sounds a lot of money. Mm -hmm. As the likes of Spotify, it's not much. But then we're hoping by doing something positive, constructive, others will follow. So that's the, the motivation there. So you're right, there's one copy of this album, Vegetal Digital. It's a proper album. It's got proper songs on it, not just 30 second songs. <laughs> it's uh, going back to our indie rock roots. Uh, uh, and it, it, I, I really like the album um, and I'm proud of it. And no one's going to be able to hear it, apart from the person who buys it. And there's a special <laughs> message recorded on the album for this person as well. Wow. And it's on sale on our local record shop, Empire Records in St Albans who are a great independent retailer and we want to support them as well. So it's, we've got people going in just to say, oh, well, can I hold it and can I have my photo with it? It's like, <laughs> that, so, that's, so that's cool. So. That is very cool. It's very cool indeed. Do you think you you will find a buyer for it if you had any interested parties? We, we have, we've we had people come into the record shop. Oh, um, I'm interested, but you know, can I make an offer? So people are trying to make offers, but okay. I don't want to do it an auction thing. It's not, you know, it's not eBay yeah. or Discord because it's, you know, I want that. It's a million pounds for a reason. And the reason is we need that million pounds to invest in this, something good for the future. Yeah. And in terms so, of, yeah. oh, sorry, sorry. Go so I was going to say, in terms of the nub play, then, I mean, the streaming service, have have you managed to get any other backers or anything else involved with this? No, not yet. We decided because we want to raise awareness of this issue. So this is the best way of doing it was put this album on sale for a million pounds and then use the money for that. There are other companies out there that are doing a bit more ethical service there's a uh, company called sunstream who are very good okay. uh and they've got some good backing uh financial backing and they're starting their own streaming service where they're paying a lot more and it's a lot more ethical uh so i'm hoping they do well as well it, it, you know this is not about me getting rich or not play becoming the new spotify it's about getting the issue out there and trying to create real change and get the momentum going really that's what it's about Fantastic. And the fact that you've actually had a, a conversation and a sit down with some of the higher echelons of, of Spotify and Daniel Eck, as we, we spoke about, I mean, that, that's that's incredible. And it shows the what can be done when you actually put your mind to it, as you said. Absolutely. Yeah, it's because we, we are, you know, we're a small company business here. You know, there's me and there's my band and there's my business partner guy. Um, you know, we do it all ourselves at the end of the day, just through hard work and, you know, and we love what we're doing. Uh, and I think if you've got that ethos, you can go a long way. Keep Absolutely. believing. Absolutely. Keep believing indeed. Now, if uh, anyone wants to find out more about yourselves or this million pound record or anything like that, what's the best way to to, to look you up? Yeah, just go to our website, thepocketgods.com. Everything's on there. So, and there'll be links to uh, the trailer for the film and to the million pound album. So. <laughs> Yeah, get your checkbooks out, people. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's been all an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Accepted, so. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, Mark Christopher Lee. Um, we you, wish you the best of luck, and uh, hopefully streaming services start paying out a little bit more for musicians and keep the industry alive. Thank you very much.